fire, police, neighborhood services, community economic development department, neighbors, West Corps, all out at Metro Center Mall, here on the issues on the road. What is so special about today? Well, this is the kickoff of the fight back for the Metro Center area. All right. And with us today, we have the Phoenix Fire Department's big unit ladder truck. We have the police department out here in force with their special assignment unit van. If you support the police and fire, the graffiti busters, and everybody else involved in keeping your community safe, you have to support shopping in Phoenix. Welcome to On the Issues on the Road. We're here at Metro Center, one of the great shopping malls, and with me is one of my old time friends, Mayor Phil Gordon. Thanks Mayor, not. thank you for coming out today. Oh, I'll tell you, uh, I came here as a child, I've been coming here as an adult, and what a great jewel you have here in the middle of your district. I tell you what, it is one of the nicest malls in the city of Phoenix, and it's very important to make sure that we sustain the economic growth that we have in the city. And of course, to make sure that happens, we need to keep the neighborhoods involved, and we're kicking off the Metro Center fight back today. A, a unique partnership. I remember as councilman, we did a small one on 7th Avenue, a partnership between the merchants and the neighborhoods, and that's been wildly successful. It took back that area, but we've never done a fight back, and, and that's a credit to you, where we've involved so many neighborhood associations, so many commercial properties, and certainly such a giant and tremendous and important asset as the Metro Center. Absolutely, and West Corps has taken over the mall again. People remember the golden days of Metro Center. It's coming back because West Corps spent a lot of money. They've resurfaced all the parking lots, redone the interiors, the signage. In fact, you've been through some of this. What do you think? You know, it is so important that all our retail centers remain healthy and remain vibrant. And I'll tell you, Metro Center has generated so much income in the past, employed so many individuals, and generated that sales tax that allows us to hire more police officers, firefighters. And I'll tell you, the way the city has grown, keeping the center of our city healthy is even critically more important because we've got the infrastructure here. And I'll tell you, I've seen the new landscaping. I just heard about the hotel. They're doing the new renovations and the new landscaping. The signage is going to be beautiful. I've seen the renderings of that. Metro Center is a place where families will be able to come, shop, enjoy, eat, and really take in just the, the sights. I mean, look at this area. You can either take your kids like I've done on the roller coaster, Dave. But by the way, your little one? I, I would not let them trick you to get onto it. <laughs> you know, the, the fact is it's a safe environment, it's a clean environment, and as you said, the sales tax that are generated right here pay for a lot of our police and firefighters. So, you know, I encourage people as we're coming up on the holiday season to make sure that they support Phoenix. Try Metro Center. It's a great place. It's probably better than it was when it first opened. They're really doing a great job with it. It's clean, it's safe, it's a great environment, and guess what? It's close to a whole lot of people in the city of Phoenix. Well, it's easy access. It's right off the freeway. And the other important thing, as you said, is let's support our merchants because by supporting our merchants, we're able then to buy new equipment for our firefighters and police officers. We're able to buy more books for the library. We're able to help the seniors by providing more events in the senior centers. And most importantly, we're able to hire more officers and firefighters to make sure that we stay a safe community. You know, going out and buying an automobile or a new computer for a dollar or two more potentially, but as you know, we're more competitive than our surrounding areas, but that takes away the sales tax revenue from the city of Phoenix. So if you live in Phoenix, you work in Phoenix, we ask you, you know what, shop in Phoenix. That's important. Yeah, you shop in Phoenix and it's going to make a big difference in the ability for us to provide the public safety resources we need to provide. And of course today at this event we happen to have the twin engine rescue helicopter, the big unit from the fire department, the huge ladder truck, and so many other fire and police vehicles. So. For the folks that had a chance to come out, and I know there's going to be hundreds coming out throughout the day, uh, they're going to enjoy seeing this great equipment, and it's paid for by sales tax. It is, and I'll tell you, we got all our departments here that uh, to give information to the surrounding neighborhood residents. We, we don't want to leave out, and I know that's why you've invited everyone here today to say thank you 
to our residents. They really are the eyes and ears of their neighborhood. And if they're not out front, if they're not sitting on those front porch benches that you and I like to talk about, which is really literally being involved in your neighborhood, then the police, no matter how many officers we have, you know, won't be able to do as good a job. So if you're out front, if you're playing, if you're walking, if you see something suspicious, call the police. That's what they're there for. But don't turn inward. Don't stay inside your home and give up, because if you give up, I'll tell you, the ones that are going to succeed are the bad guys. So thank you, Dave, so very, well, very much. Thank you for coming out, because, you know, every fight back I've picked in District 1 has always been based on need, but more importantly, the ability of the folks to be active. If they're not active, we can spend a lot of money and get absolutely no results. So with uh, the metro states and the multifamily areas around here and all the neighborhoods, uh, especially Lou Snow and all these folks, doing a great job out here and uh, they want to thank you also for being here today. Well, I want to thank you and I want to thank all our residents, all our partners, especially want to thank my colleague, Dave Siebert, who's worked so hard and gotten a lot of gray hair over the years, but Why you made it? a difference. Why is it that I get the gray hair and you don't? I'll tell the uh, listeners later. <laughs> thank you, Mayor. What's that? Those are his hands. I go like this. Hold, hold your hand like that. Now hold your hand like that with me. Go like this. See that? That's what this does. Go like this. And hold stuff like this. Hold that. See? Just like that. See? Watch. I'm here with Michael Fisher, who is the uh, senior property manager at Metro Center Mall. Yes. Michael, tell us about the mall and tell us about all the work that, that Westcore has done to improve it. Well, I tell you, Councilman Siebert, we're just so excited about what the renovation is. It's a project that started last August, and we look at it going through to the end of 2007, and it's just taking a mall that's 34 years old and revitalizing it, giving it new energy, and still being in the center of it all in the city of Phoenix. I mean, it is just so great. Uh, we're putting in new parking lot, we put in new lighting, we've put in new landscaping, uh, we've taken all of our entrances and re, re have done those, all of those entrances. We're also coming into the inside, we're putting in a whole new food court, we're putting in a new play area, we're putting in a new security guest services kiosk that will house our new CCTV system. We're uh, renovating all of the entryways into the property, uh, both from an exterior, interior. We're putting up new signing to direct people into our property. We're also going to be putting a pylon sign that will be able to be seen off of I-17, which is a major thoroughfare between Phoenix going north and south. So we're just very excited about all that's going on in the property. Plus, we've got a lot of new tenants coming in. We've just opened up an American Eagle. Uh, today, today, Deb Shop opens. We have a new famous footwear that'll be opening. We have a lot of new tenants that are becoming going to be coming into the the uh, property. Big, big cue was that we got Sport Chalet. Sport Chalet is going to be a 40,000 square foot facility within our mall uh, that is just exciting for all of us. We expect that to be open in May of next year. And of course, we're working every day on new deals. Well, I tell you what, it sounds like really exciting things, you know. This used to be the center of Phoenix, really, as far as activity, when it was a huge mall. As, as uh, somebody said earlier, it was the largest mall west of the Mississippi when it was built. That's correct. And, you know, I even went to ASU Metro Center here when I was going <laughs> to college because there was no ASU West back then. So it truly was a center for education. It was a center for retail. It was just a great, nice place. And, you know, something, I'm, I'm looking at it today, and with the, with the money that you've put into it, the renovations that you've made, it is just as good today as it was the day it opened. Oh, I think that you have to change. You have to revitalize yourself. As the community changes, as the community grows, you have to grow because we are a property that surrounds ourselves with a very large community that we care about. And we have to be active in making sure that our property shouts the development, shouts revitalization, shouts newness on an ongoing basis. And if we fail to do that, we're not keeping our commitment to the community. And that's very important for well, us. Well, and, and Westcore was the original builder, and yes. then you sold it, and so for a few years you didn't have it. You've come Correct. back, you've taken over again. Did you work here years ago? I, I worked here about four years ago, but actually I was here when the mall opened up. It was my first district manager's job in the retail sector of the industry, and uh, my office was here at Metro Center. I lived off of Bell Road in 17, which was the end of the Phoenix area at that time, and then coming back here to run the property many, many years later has just been a real 
revitalization of my own career, my own growth, and then to come and see the potential that this property still has after being here so long is just exciting. Well, I tell you what, you've done a great job revitalizing it. If you could tell all our friends over at Westcore, they've done a great job. And again, I want to encourage all the people in Phoenix, come out, shop Phoenix, shop Metro Center, because it's a great place. Absolutely. And we have a lot of things happening uh, in the holiday season coming along. We've got a new holiday decor. We've got all kinds of new things for people to see and to re-educate themselves about what Metro Center is today and what it's going to be tomorrow. And with people like yourselves and Mayor Gordon and all of the city officials supporting us, Metro Center can't help but be successful and revitalize our community. Well, it will be. And thank you for being part of it. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you coming out. We're here at Metro Center with Lieutenant Hampton. Lieutenant, good to see you here today. Councilman Siebert. You know, let's talk a little bit about the fight back program that we have going on here. You have a lot of folks that are working the area, making sure that the place is safe, and it is a safe place, but you know, we don't want any place to deteriorate when a place gets, you know, between 30 and 40 years old. It's just nice to have a little bit of extra enforcement to make sure that there are no issues. Let's talk about your folks and what they do out here. Uh, Councilman, we have approximately four squads that's been dedicated to the Metro fight back area. And these squads include crime enforcement, uh, blight enforcement, uh, crime-free multi-housing, community action officers who will deal with transients, who will deal with uh, graffiti issues, who will deal with auto theft, criminal damage, aggravated assaults. We have people specifically dedicated to make sure that this is a safe environment for everyone to live in. And it really is a safe environment. I walk through here and I shop here, my wife shops here, and you walk through it and, and you really don't see any kind of, of bad activity. But the thing is, is just to make sure it doesn't occur, we not only work in Metro Center, but we're working, like you mentioned, the multifamily area and the single family residential area around it. Absolutely. Um, in fact, I grew up in Phoenix and I used to come here when I was in high school. And I come here daily. I come. We see what goes on out here and we don't see any actual great crimes out here. A lot of them are disordered crimes, but it's nothing that's that exposed. It's nothing that's going to deter people from coming into the mall and, and taking their family to the mall and enjoying a good time that they may have at Castles and Coasters over here. Uh, I just don't see that happening and we're going to make sure that that doesn't happen in the future. Well, and behind us we have the Twin Engine Rescue Helicopter and we talk a lot about how important it is for people to shop Phoenix and Metro Center clearly is a gem for a retail experience in the city of Phoenix and in the southern part of District 1. And tell us how important is the police equipment. If you didn't have the equipment, you didn't have the sales tax revenue, could you really do your job? Absolutely not. There are so many resources that we need in the police department. And we have to do things that just require resources such as, as weapons. It requires resources, uh, ballistic vests, vehicles, bikes. We have our bike patrol out here, as you've seen out here. And, and the monies that come from taxes actually pay for that. And so without that, and without having that, not only police officers couldn't do their job, the firefighters really couldn't do theirs Absolutely either. Absolutely not. Well, I have to encourage all the folks out there to shop Metro Center, shop Phoenix, enjoy the mall. We have hundreds of people out here today enjoying this experience. And I tell you what, they're sure our little kids are climbing into the helicopter and having a great time. So you have the pilots out here. You have your folks from Cactus Park out here. We have the reserve officers out here. And we have a lot of firefighters. So if you would tell all your folks they're doing a great job, it's a safe place to be, Absolutely. and we appreciate everything that they do. I certainly will. Lieutenant, thank you very thank much, you. sir. Thank you. Well, I'm here with Jerome Miller. Jerome, you're the, Good morning. you are the director of the Neighborhood Services Department. Yes, I am. And behind us is a graffiti truck. Now, yes. tell us where we went, let's say a year and a half, two years ago, when we had some problems with graffiti across the entire city, and where we're at today. Well, about... Uh, a year ago in the city, we had gotten to a point where of our sites that we actually get to paint out, we were up to three weeks in terms of painting those sites out. Today, with the help of the mayor and the city council and an infusion of $300,000, we were able to buy this new truck you see here, have a new graffiti team, and we reduced the, amount, the time to 48 hours of reported sites in terms of our paint out of those sites. So we're helping. And graffiti is also an economic crime. So for us, by getting the graffiti off, making the neighborhoods look clean again, helps us and it helps the economic vitality of the city. 
And you know, it's one of the frustrating things for the folks in Phoenix is, you know, we were doing a great job 10 years ago. You know, we put the items, the spray cans behind the counters so that the kids couldn't just get them and, and buy them without any ID and showing that they were 18. So that worked for a while, but then we saw this resurgence, as you said, about a year and a half, two years ago. It really started getting bad. So now we have it back under control again, and it truly is an economic crime. It's not, I, I don't call them graffiti artists, they are vandals. That, Plain and simple. That's simple. Yeah, that is correct, Councilman. We look at them as graffiti vandals. And what happens is the city got so good at it. We got so good at graffiti by having neighborhood residents help us, businesses help us, and we kind of forgot. And then it took off again with the resurgence. But we're, we're back where we want to be. We have the schools involved. We have neighborhoods involved. We have the police involved again. The county uh, attorney's office is really involved. So right now we're getting a hold on graffiti again, and it's a work in progress. And, you know, if it's a juvenile offender, the parents are liable up to $10,000. Yes, they are, Councilman. So it's a, it's a note to the parents that they need to really understand and know what their kids are doing because they could be paying up to $10,000 for these crimes. That, that, and they can also, the kids can lose their driver's license until they become an adult as well. Correct. Well, I tell you what, if you could tell your folks that are doing the graffiti busters that they're doing a great job because when you get it down to 48 hours, the public is very, very happy. Well, I, will, I will share that message to them. And another thing, we're out here with a fight back. And since your department is one of the lead agencies over the fight back program, tell the viewers who may have never heard what a fight back is, what it's really designed to do. Fight back program is an 18 year old program that's designated by the Marin City Council where each council district designates a fight back each year. The fight back is an increase in city services for a short period of time and can focus on a bunch of different things. In some cases, it focuses on crime and blight. In other cases, it focuses on building neighborhood capacity. And in this case, it's going to focus on an array of things, including building neighborhood capacity, working with the Met West Corps and the Metro Center on economic vitality, as well as bringing the neighborhood back together on issues that, they, that are important to them. Well, you know, we've done small ones in the city that had an economic component to it, but this is the first one of this magnitude. You know, from I-17 to 35th Avenue, from Dunlap to Peoria, one square mile area, which mainly is commercial. A little bit of multifamily in there and, and some really nice housing and single family residential, but the majority of it is commercial. And I think this is the first fight back that has been this large, that has had that much commercial. And yet it is a great area. Uh, with West Corp putting in millions and millions of dollars to uh, revitalize the area and with a neighborhood that is just one of the best I've ever worked with. These folks are coming together. In fact, today we have some of our other neighborhoods, West Town and Choi and some of the others are coming out here to help kick off this great event because they shop at this mall and they love it. Well, partly the Fight Back program, Councilman, as you well know, is resident driven. And in this case, it's resident driven and business driven. So what we want to do as a city department is listen to the needs of those residents. And yeah, this is a little bit different for us, a little bit different in terms of the Fight Back model, but with the array of city departments that we have, police, human services, community economic development, parks, just to name a few, we think we'll take this model and see what, we, what comes out of it. But I think what it does show with all, everyone here today is that the reinfusion and the reinvigoration of the neighborhood and the vitality of the Metro Center Mall area, which we hope to work, work and improve even greater once the fight back is over. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a great place to shop. I shop here. Don't tell my wife she'll shop here more. No, all just right. kidding. Anyway, Jerome, thank you very much. Your folks do a wonderful, wonderful job. Thank you, Councilman, and thank you and the mayor for all the support you give us in the Neighborhood Services Department. Thank you. You know, our graffiti buster program has been a phenomenal success, and with me today is a person that helped start it, Thelda Williams. Thelda, thank you for being out here today. Thank you for having me. Well, you know, you helped start the program back when you were on the city council. Tell us about the problems you were having and what it took uh, to start the program. At that time, graffiti was really, really predominant all over this end of town, and it was intruding into neighborhoods, it was damaging business, and um, I went to the police department, um, to other council members, and said, you know, we really have to make a citizen's effort. We will never be able to just have neighborhoods or neighborhood services at Phoenix. Um, so it was a really combined effort, and we recruited the people in this area as the first people to get involved. And clearly today you can see that uh, they're still very involved, and it has made a tremendous difference 
and you were one of the first to actually push to have these spray cans put behind the counter or in the lock cabinet. Yes, yes, and I remember that was a very uh, controversial vote, but uh, I thought the cause was right and uh, it's very important and it's made a big difference. Certainly has, you know, it, it, graffiti went way down and then in the last couple of years started going up again and then of course we funded another graffiti truck that we saw earlier that um, really has helped make a difference, but it really started with you and your effort to try to stop the graffiti problem because we didn't want to look like a lot of other major cities. You know, your effort back then got it down to, um, from the time it was called in, it would be eradicated in, in within 48 hours and we got up to as long as two to three weeks and now we're back down to 48 hours, but it took $300,000 and another entire crew to do it. Uh, but it was all from your leadership years ago, and, and I, we really appreciate that. There was another program that we've been very excited about. It was called Block Watchers on Patrol, now called Phoenix Neighborhood Patrol. It started uh, with your insistence in Cactus Park. In Cactus Park, the police department, only Cactus Park supported it. The rest of the police department said it would never work. Too much liability but uh, very much into uh, block watchers and I knew that there was community support and the captain at that time of uh, Cactus Park put his muscle behind it, we put it together, we got donors to buy those t-shirts, put on trainings and I, I was very, very proud of the people that participated. And uh, it was Officer Eddie Patterson, as I recall, was the guy that started teaching it and really involved in it. And I tell you what, your, your relationship with the police department was great. Of course, that's because you had your no, husband course, and no your reason. son that, yeah, that they, have retired they, from the department. They kept me on my toes. <laughs> so anyway, thank you for all the work that you did because it truly is paying off today. Thank you very much for continuing it. I appreciate all of your help. Um, everybody has a little slip of paper in which group you're supposed to be in. So if everybody who's in group A could just gather up over there by those chairs. Group B by this wall. Hello. Hey, good how to are you? see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hey, I tell you what, you know, you're a pretty busy guy. You're the, you know, the leader for the Metro Center Estates Block Watch. Yes, sir. And you're also the leader of the Fight Back. So tell us uh, <laughs> what's going on in the neighborhood and how important this is to you. Well, this is very important to us as a neighborhood. We're uh, in a position that which we really look at decreasing our crime and our graffiti and uh, helping the neighborhood improve the. Uh, environment and, and hopefully that we're, uh, we're going to make a change. Well, I tell you what, you got a great neighbor, it's a pretty safe place to live, but you know every once in a while you get a little bit of graffiti out here and you've had uh, few property crimes, that, that seems to be the biggest issue in the, in the area. You know, not a lot of violent crimes, but property crimes in, in the neighborhoods and so we feel that the fight back working with your community action officers and, and the police officers out of the Cactus Park precinct, you guys can make a huge dent in the crime that is there. Yes. Yes, we're very pleased with what our community action officer is doing and our police department, as well as working with your uh, office and the mayor's office, and we're, we're making a difference. So we're excited about that. Well, we had the graffiti truck, and you mentioned graffiti earlier, and that's been a problem throughout the city. But we decided to make a big effort right up here in the Metro Center area, and it looks like they have most of it wiped out right now. Yes, we've quite a bit of improvement. Looks very well. We've got uh, almost all the graffiti cleaned up at this point in time, so hopefully we can keep them away. Well, I tell you what, one of the reasons that we picked this area was not because it's really deteriorated, it's because you have an active neighborhood group. And I've always felt that if we're going to put money in the area and put staff out there, we're going to do it in an area where we have public involvement. Because without the public involvement, we cannot possibly be successful. And you really have a great neighborhood group. That's great. Yes, we do. We have very much, we have quite a few captains and volunteers involved. Everybody's very conscientious. Uh, they're very active, so we've got a great group and we want to keep the momentum. And I tell you what, this event today, there's literally been hundreds of people just constantly passing through here, coming and going, looking at all the police equipment, the fire equipment, stopping by your booth, having a good time. I tell you what, it's a great event. Yes, it is. We enjoy it very much. Well, thank Lou, you. thank you very much. You're doing thank a great you. job. And tell all your folks out here, they're just awesome. We sure will. Thank you for your help. Thank you. Appreciate it.
interested in a career, then of course this would be impactful for you. But if you're happy with what you're doing yeah. in your current job and you just want to come out and volunteer yeah. your time as an officer, then you go that route right there. With me is Assistant Chief Scott Finical, who is an attorney by daytime and after hours. He is a reserve police officer. That's right, Councilman. Well, Scott, you've been doing this for a long time, and you know the reserve program is so important. Tell us where we were in, let's say, mid-2004 and where we are today with the number of reserve police officers we have in the city of Phoenix. In mid-2004, we had about 24 reserve officers, and with the encouragement and support of council members like you, the mayor, and the chief, we are now about to have 100 sworn reserve officers. So we've had incredible growth, and we're headed to a goal of 300 reserve officers. And the rules were slightly changed, where before it was almost impossible to still have a life and also be a police officer in the reserve program. What are the rules today? We've lessened the commitment now to 60 hours every three months or 240 hours on an annual basis. So it's a very workable commitment so people can continue their day jobs and still serve the community as reserve officers. And so if they want to do it, where's the best place for them to contact? We hope they will contact one of our recruitment officers by calling us at 602-534-9000 and we can give them all the information that they need.